okay so I wanted to post this video because um, I know I have a Kawasaki Bio 250 it's somewhere between I'm assuming a 2004 and 2010 I really don't know I just recently found the VIN number on it and I haven't had a chance to do some investigating to figure out if I could find out exactly what year it is but I had posted a couple of videos um, because it wouldn't run and you know the motor would turn over and everything but all it do is make a clicking noise like the um uh the gears were just spinning they weren't making a connection to actually start the the motor start the four wheeler so i had a guy looking at it for me and it kept sharing off the woodruff keys couldn't figure out why so I brought it back home because he couldn't get it to actually run. It would run, and then it would, he would shut it off, and it would share the keys, and it wouldn't start back up. So it's kind of the same deal a couple times, and I told him, you know, no more, because I was paying around $4 a piece for a Woodruff key, which it looks like a half of a moon, um, just to kind of give you guys an idea. Um, I meant to bring it out to show one of y'all, but... Long story short, I was working on it, and I was actually going to do a whole video of me putting everything back together, showing you, um, whoever watches this, how everything's supposed to go. Well, the guy ends up showing up and helps me, so I didn't get to put anything on video for you, but I'm going to try to explain what all happened and how to fix everything. Um, okay, so when you take this cover off... You're going to come to um, a stator flywheel. In that stator flywheel, there is a, a bolt. Uh, take it off. You pull everything out. And then inside that flywheel, there's going to be a tiny, like, maybe that big, maybe a, a half of an inch square key. Make sure you don't lose that, or you're going to have to go buy one and have one cut down. Um, then you take that off, and... In front of the big sprocket, there's going to be, I think this is right, the big sprocket there's going to be where the woodruff key goes, the, the half moon key. If you take the big uh, sprocket off, on this side over here, there's going to be a little small sprocket. And then this bolt right here is going to have to come off because you actually have to take this plate off. And all of these little bolts in here, there's a big one in the top and then the other four or three are different sizes so you make sure you remember which one goes where um, so you take this this bolt off right here it's like a ground bar I do believe you pull this plate off and that's where um, your big and little sprockets and stuff are behind the big sprocket there is um, what looks like a gold or a copper washer it's not a very, it's not a real small washer. Uh, I'm telling you all this because I took everything off and cleaned everything. This is another thing I found, and I, I saw this on another YouTube video, which I'm I'm thinking that it helped as well. So I'm going to tell you guys too. Took everything off. The um, the bolt, the rod, or the spindle, whatever you call it, inside that where the the sprocket, the big sprocket attaches onto, it slides onto. Make sure all of that is completely dry. Uh, no moisture, no nothing. And then get you some grinding compound. Okay, well, I thought I had my grinding compound out here, but I don't. I was going to show you guys. It's, um, it comes in a little tube, probably about four inches long. You can, I got mine at my local. Uh, advanced auto stores uh, usually I think Lowe's, Lowe's cares it I don't think Walmart does but I know um, AutoZone and Advanced Auto usually sell it it's like four dollars five dollars a tube I put some of that on there and then I took um, I put the flywheel the stator back on and it and another YouTube video said that you put that on and you rotate it counter clockwise for a minute 
when I did this and I noticed that it was catching. So after a minute, I took it off, cleaned the stator, cleaned the the rod, whatever you want to call it. Sorry, I don't know the exact name for it at the moment, but I cleaned them off really good. I reapplied the grounding compound, did it again, it caught more. So I ended up doing that three separate times before I actually put it on and it actually spinned freely without catching. So I cleaned it all off again, made sure everything was completely dry, and then I started putting everything back together. Um, make sure you put the gold or copper looking washer first behind the big sprocket because if you don't, it's not very thick, but it, this will not go back on, it will not seat properly if you put it in front of the sprocket. Put the sprocket back on, um, there is a, a bushing, I put it on. Uh, and then I think I had, then I had to put the little sprocket on this side. I had to put it on and then, um, the flywheel, the stator went on. Then I had to make sure the woodruff keys were lined up and I was, the guy that I had help working with me, he said that if, um, where the keys were at and then the little slots inside the flywheel, if it went on perfectly, this is going to be in time. You don't have to worry about timing it. But those have to line up and actually be seated in together before it'll be in time. So I put everything back on, put everything back together, put this on. I sealed this with some gray valve, uh, not valve, gasket making silicone. That's what I used for this up here, up in here. I put everything back together, put this bolt back on put my pull rope starter on and oh before I put this on this is the main point I was trying to get to when you put the flywheel stator on there is a bolt that slides in the middle of it to hold the flywheel and stator on that bolt there's only one and it's a pretty good size bolt it's probably a half inch or bigger bolt that bolt has to be torqued at 43 foot pounds so you get your trusty little torque wrench out, and mine is set up a little differently, but um, as you can see, there's markings on it. You set it to 40, where well, the 40 mark is, which is right there, and then down here, down here on the handle, it has you know 0 through 8. I set that on for 3, so it made it 43 foot-pounds. And I torqued that bolt inside of there until my torque wrench clicked. I ended up, I looked everywhere on YouTube, YouTube videos. There was one guy said it had to be torqued at 300 foot pounds. Um, I got a bunch of different numbers and I was like, you know, this is a small bolt. It's, I don't think it could handle that much pressure. So I ended up calling one of my local ATV shops and I was questioning the guy about it, everything. And he looked it up. And sure enough, it was 43 foot pounds. And I actually found online on a, on my Play Store there is a, an app that you can download that you can look up any kind of four wheeler, and it has the manuals for every four wheeler. So instead of having to buy the book, which is 40, 50, 60 dollars, I downloaded this app free of charge. And after I called the guy and actually got this put back together and was running I was looking on it to see if it actually showed everything and it did and sure enough plain black and white it said 43 foot pounds so I tightened that bolt up torqued it 43 foot pounds I'm saying that a lot because that's very important if you don't get that torqued right and it doesn't if it's not tight enough you're going to share off your keys again put this cover back on tightened up my bolts everything Turned it, cranked it up, started fine. I was like, great, you know, it's going to run. I don't know how long my four-wheeler had been set, and I got it used. Um, just luckily I found it. Um, got a really good deal on it, so I thought that, you know, I figured I was going to have more problems than what I have so far with it. So, cranked my four-wheeler up, ran. Great. I was kind of afraid to shut it off, because I was like, oh, you know, that's when he said he had all the problems with it. So... Shut it off, waited a few minutes, cranked it back up, 
started up again. Took it up the road and ran it. And after it got hot, it smoked really bad. Well, when I had I had to have it turned on its side to work on it, I jacked it up, you know, one of those little uh, backwards rigging kind of things where you could actually work on it. Because I had to, you know, that's another thing. you got to leave it, this four wheeler, put it on its side so the oil will drain back down so you can get this dried out inside of here to keep the oil out where you need it to keep it out from. Don't try to work on it setting up like I have it now, setting on all, all fours. It won't work as good. So we took it up and I was running a little bit. Started smoking really bad. Well, when I had, before I ran it, when I put it down and everything, I couldn't see the oil inside the little glass piece over here where you check the oil at, which is right down there. Okay, I'm right here, right there. Couldn't see the oil, so I thought it was low. Come to find out it wasn't. It's just where it hasn't, hadn't ran down. So I overfilled it. It smoked really bad. And pretty sure the oil got burned in it because I went to uh, empty some of it out and it was horrible. Um, so anyway, ran it a couple more times. Actually, we actually took this four-wheeler on a, uh, about a four-hour ride. It's probably been a couple weeks ago now because I haven't had a chance to make a video to tell you guys about this, which I've been really wanting to do because I know it was very helpful for me. And it actually worked. So we took this uh, forward on about a four-hour ride. Ran great. No problems. It's got a little bit of tweaks in it where, you know, we need to adjust the idle and the brakes and stuff like that. Simple little things from where it's been setting. But the forward on runs great. Never had a problem with it. Every time we shut it off, it cranked right back up just like a new four-wheeler. Never didn't hesitate, didn't grind, nothing. And I'm gonna there's a video that I posted that well I haven't posted it yet of the four-wheeler ride. I'm gonna post it after I do this so you guys can if you hang around and watch my channel, you'll be able to see this four-wheeler running and see that it actually does work. Um so Anyway, I hope this is helpful for you guys, gals. Um, if you have any questions, please make sure you post them below. Any comments, post them as long as they're nice. Don't be rude and negative and mean and all that crap that I see a lot on YouTube videos and everything. And there's no sense in all that. But, and if you really want to hang out and see what's going to be happening on my channel, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Alright, thanks for watching.